Okay, welcome to the basic tutorial on how to do the shark game. Uh, this is the no frills version. You can see how to do the basic game of the shark trying to catch the fish with the shark becoming larger once he does and the fish disappearing after he's eaten. So we start by loading Alice and we go to the sea floor. We say okay. And we have our my first method and our initialize event listeners. We're going to start with the my first method. Um, our goal is to create of course, a scene that has a shark and a fish, at least. So let's check out the swimmer classes and bring a clownfish. You can just call it clownfish. And let's also get a shark. And from here, we're going to want to possibly translate them upwards. So we're just going to grab the uh, clownfish and pull it up so it's not so close to the ground. Maybe we'll zoom out just a little bit, and grab the shark, and pull him upwards as well. Okay. We're also going to want a camera marker once we have a good overview of our scene. So here's a nice overview shot, camera marker. And from here we're going to say add camera marker. Call it start cam. So if I get lost in my program and I want to go back to this cam, you can say from the black camera, which is where you are now, to the red camera, which is this one. If you want to throw in some decorations as well, you can. So if you want to go over to ocean, throw in a cave, you could do that. You can have as many objects as you want, really. Try not to make it too complicated at the start, though. We're going to go back to edit code. And our first goal is to get our clownfish to swim. Uh, we may want to focus the camera first, though. So let's just go to this camera. And let's go to move and orient to the start cam that we just made. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. If we run our script, we just see that the camera is now at the same part that the start cam would be in. From here, let's try to put some motion on the fish. We could say this clownfish. We could ask him to move forward by 10. And he would do that. Off the screen he goes. Let's have the camera actually follow the fish now. This camera. Set vehicle to this clownfish. Now our camera will follow it. Let's try to do a loop now. While true is true, which is always the case, let's have him move forward by 10. In this case, he's going to keep moving forward by 10 over and over and over. That's not very good. We want him to do a random pattern. So we're going to have him always move forward 10, but now we're going to create an if statement. If true, we're going to have this fish turn left. We'll start with 0.25. If not true, we're going to have him do the second one, which is turn right by 0.25. Again, if we run this, he always does his 10, and he's always turning right which will basically make him do a rectangle. Since he doesn't have a very good chance of getting away from the shark, let's change that. Let's change the if true, because if true is true, it's always going to do this top line, which is why this is happening. Let's change this to next random boolean. It's going to alternate now between true and false. So if it picks true, it's going to do the top line, and if it picks false, it's going to do the bottom line. And there you can see, we have a random pattern. Okay, giving shark control now, we're going to go to initialize event listeners. You do anything here where the user is con in control. We're going to add a keyboard listener. And we're going to say, if the user, set it to true for now, 
go to the shark. We're going to replace the true with the E key, which can be any key. We're going to say if they press left, what should we do? We should have the shark turn left. You can choose the amount here. I'm going to do this for now, 0.125. If the user presses right, then we're going to have them turn the opposite way. Other options, if they want the shark to move upwards, then we're going to have move, not turn. Turn, we don't want him to turn towards the ceiling, towards the uh, top of the water. We want him to actually kind of float upwards. And again, you could do down. If E key is down, then we can have him move downwards. Same amount to make it consistent. We might want him to go, obviously we need him to move forward. And you can set this to whatever you want, but I'm gonna get use the A key. So if I run this code, oh, sorry, the last statement here. If it's A key, we want the shark to move forward. And you can choose the amount again. We'll say one for now. There's other things like uh, held key policy. I would set that to combine, and I would set to multiple. So now if we run this, the shark's now able to be controlled. But there's one other thing we should do now. We should change the camera from set vehicle this clownfish to set vehicle this shark. Run our code. And now you can see, whenever I press A, he moves forward, and he's making the proper turns. Okay. The last of the essentials is collision detection, what happens when the shark touches the fish. Add listener, position orientation. We're going to add collision start, customer A, customer A. When... The shark's head touches the clownfish anywhere. I could specify a part, but I don't need to. Then do whatever's in here. So the final step here is to uh, tell the program what to do if the shark's head touches the clownfish. We're going to need the shark to resize, we will make him twice as big as he was. And we will need the fish. Since we can't delete him, we're going to have to make him disappear. So we're going to set the opacity. That should probably happen before the shark gets bigger. Opacity 1 makes him fully visible. Opacity 0 makes him invisible. Now the problem is he's still around and he's still swimming, even though he's invisible. So if we leave it like this, the shark could bump into him again and get even bigger. So let's also make the clownfish after he disappears. Let's make him move up by a thousand. That will definitely clear him off the screen. And that is the game in its basic form. No extras in under 10 minutes. We can see it in action now. Off the shark goes, trying to catch the fish. You can see you can swim right through the caves right now because there's no collision on that. Definitely something you could do to make it better. We can also see that right now the fish has a very good chance of getting away. He's a little bit too fast, so we may want to stop the game and go back and tweak his speed. Let's make it a little bit easier. 
full screen that. Off we go. Now the fish doesn't have as much chance. Right now he's underneath me. Oh, and there he goes, and the game is over. Okay, so in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to make uh, more advanced features, multiple fish, better camera angles, uh, and different things to make the game more interesting.